Today we are heading into Dollar Tree so I can share with you 25 of the best DIYs. Hello, welcome to a little bit of Common Crazy. I want to thank Sherbonder for sponsoring today's video. This first DIY was inspired by this tray that I saw at Hobby Lobby. But if you were anything like me, you see something and you see the price and you're like, uh-uh, no, no, I can do something and I can do it cheaper. You want to grab some sort of a wood blank. So I grabbed this from the plus section, but you can also get some of these slats, glue them together, or even get some of the larger wood that is in the regular like $1.25 section. It doesn't really matter. Just get some wood. You also want to grab some beads for the handle. Now, this is the best price because you get 100 beads for that $1.25. Drill a couple holes on each side of your wood so that you have room to place this handle. I'm using a 1 8 bit to do that. And then you're simply going to take your beads and string them up on some twine. Now to secure these to the bottom, all you need to do is grab some of the smaller beads that Dollar Tree has. Do a couple of knots to make sure that it can't slip through that smaller bead. And you have yourself a super easy and cute tray. I chose to go ahead and seal mine with some of this feed and wax. It has a really yummy, sweet smell. Once it's all sealed, then you can style anything you want on it. I think it looks really pretty with a candle. This is great in a bathroom. So many different options with such a cute little tray. This also makes a really great larger tray. So you can actually get some free wood off of Amazon Marketplace. Just type in free wood and scroll down until you find what it is you're looking for. So here I found all of this wood, either come and get it or they were gonna dispose of it by Monday. When I did this, I did have to go ahead and give it a good sand beforehand just to smooth it out. From there, you can apply your holes to each side. Now, especially with this being larger, I found it easier to have a template to help me to drill my holes. Once I had my holes in place, I also wanted to give this a little bit of color. So you can stain it, paint it, whatever you want. I'm using some paint watered down to make like a whitewash. So I get that on there. I wipe off the excess. And you see those other two small pieces? Those are going to be the pieces that go on the bottom and provide some legs. So after you have it all done, then you can go ahead and do the same thing you did earlier. Get some twine, some beads, string up those handles tie a good double knot in the back to keep it in place. Don't forget, glue those legs on and you have yourself a beautiful tray that makes the perfect base for any home decor. For this next DIY, you are gonna wanna get four of these picture frames that have that corrugated metal and then go ahead and pop that metal out while you're at it. See those little prongs on the back side? Pull those out as well and get rid of the little clips because you will not need them. Using one of those Dollar Tree crates, go ahead and glue a picture frame on each side of that crate. And then you are going to take a, one of the metal pieces and slide it in on each side as well. For the top of this, you again need to glue one of the frames on, but this time you're gonna glue it and then slant that frame, hold it in place, and then do the same thing to the other side. And then use some glue to attach those two to make like, kind of like an A-line at the very top. I'm using the Shervander cordless detail tip and I love it because I can be so precise. Once you have the top in place, go ahead and add a little hot glue on some metal frames to cover up the rest of that crate on each side. And then you have yourself the cutest little, I don't know, do you wanna call this a little garden house, terrarium? Honestly, I don't care what you call it, it's just cute. Okay, so the real eye catcher has to be these frogs. I think they are so adorable. And yes, they are from Dollar Tree. And I think they also make a great addition to any of your home decor. This third DIY is so simple, easy, and fast to do. You need to grab some moss from Dollar Tree as well as some beads. And all you're going to need to do is then string them up by alternating. Now, because I have two different bead sizes, I did choose to use both. But that's just a personal choice. You can do whatever you want. Now, you will definitely want to use a large needle to do this, and I find it easier to use like a leather thimble, is that what you call it, to help you push it in and then grab it on the other side. But once you have all your moss and beads on your string, you have yourself a beautiful garland. I think this is so clean, simple, really a nice piece, especially for spring. If you have younger children or grandchildren, you absolutely want to try this next DIY. You want to pick up one of the larger signs from Dollar Tree. They sell them all year in different ways. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I have this one from Valentine's Day. You have a couple options. You can go ahead and just rip the paper off the front, 
or if you want to, you can just sand it smooth and then go ahead and paint it. We are creating the most adorable lemonade stand for a little extra texture. Grab one of these nailing pads from Dollar Tree, cut off a handle and then cover it with paint. And you are gonna use it like a stamping pad and just press your palms into it so you can create a nice fun texture onto that sign. After it dries, you wanna pick up some Dollar Tree's poster stickers and you're gonna spell out the word lemonade. I like to use like a large ruler to help me get them nice and straight and you're just gonna place those right into the center of the sign. For added decor, go ahead and pick up some of Dollar Tree's lemon napkins. Now, if you can't find these, you can always paint lemons onto your sign and it works just as easily. You do want to separate the napkin because it's like a two ply. So run your finger along the edges until you can separate it. And then you can cut the napkin up and use it on the corners of your sign, applying it with some Mod Podge. Make sure you take that Mod Podge on top of the napkin and the Mod Podge will also help you secure the letters down that you've already placed to spell out lemonade. Get those clean edges. I just tore off the excess napkin and then took some sandpaper and just really smoothed that out. Now to finish this off, grab one of these round pieces from Dollar Tree, paint it, and then apply another one of the napkins to this. Don't forget to add your Mod Podge on the bottom and on the top. And then once this dries, glue those two pieces together and you have a great start to a really cute lemonade stand. For the bottom, you're gonna use some of Dollar Tree's crates and you are gonna glue four of those in a row and you're gonna need a total of three rows of these. Now, even though I'm creating a lemonade stand, you can do so much with these. So Bargain Bethany created like a whole cocoa bar with a similar idea. And then Sarah Jane from Chic on the Cheek, she did like a kissing booth. So you really can do so many different things with these. You just need to glue your crates together. Make sure you flip one of those rows upside down so that you can glue one of those sets of crates on top of it. And then you're gonna take your last crate and glue it in front. So it kind of creates like a little riser or stair step. You see what I mean here. From there, go ahead and paint it. Now it's time to connect the two pieces. So I'm using a couple of back scratchers. I did cut off the little claw on the top, but you could also use some of these little wooden slats that Dollar Tree carries. It's whatever you want to create those posts. I just like the design of the back scratchers. Glue those to the sign as well as the base and you are all set and ready to go. From there, you just wanna start filling up those crates. I always like to start with a little crinkle paper and then fill it up with all of the goodies. Now, because I'm doing a lemonade stand, I kind of kept with that theme. But remember, you can create this into something else like the cocoa bar or the kissing booth. And think of all the cute little sweet treats and salty yummies that you can place in here, whether you're doing it to sell or if you're throwing a party. For this next DIY, you want to grab one of these wood signs from Dollar Tree to remove the home. Just go in super gently. If you don't want to remove it, it honestly, it won't matter in the end. Now you need to grab one of these packages of the little bamboo rings and you're going to use the larger ring and glue it straight onto that little wood round. Now I did find to give it that little extra, extra security, I did take a bead of glue around the inside and then that held it tight in place. You are then going to repeat the same thing with a smaller ring and a smaller wood round. Then grab yourself a candle holder. It doesn't matter which one, just whichever one you like. You can leave it by itself and glue it on, or you can take a couple of them, glue them together, and then attach the wood rounds together. If you do it this way, you are creating a really cute tiered tray. Otherwise, you have two cute little stands. Take your favorite spray paint from there or hand paint it. It doesn't matter. Just so that the candle holders and the wood rounds match and they're all the same color. And then you can display it however you want. It's just super simple, easy, but a great piece again for your home decor. Now this next DIY is for those of you that like to get a little fancy. You're going to grab some of these curtain rings and then some raffia. Simply take that raffia and just wrap it around the rings and then secure it with a little hot glue to keep it shut. Now you can just go with one if you want to, or you can take two of them, combine them, and it makes just the most beautiful little napkin ring for any tablescape, any time of year. Now you can do the same thing with some yarn if you want to. Go ahead and wrap it and then you can even embellish a little bit depending on what time of year you plan to use these. Of course, this is great for spring, Easter, things like that, but you can do any kind of color or embellishment that you want. For 
For this next DIY, you want to pick up some of these larger wooden dice that Dollar Tree carries, and depending on how long you want it will determine how many packs of these you pick up. You're simply going to take your dice and then drill a hole right into the center. From here, you can stain them, paint them, whatever color you want so that they match your decor the best. Then once they're dry, just take some twine. I personally like to thread it with a needle and then go ahead and thread all of these onto your twine. You can then take some of that twine, wrap it around your hands a few times, then tie that loop of twine on the end of the garland. I personally like to do it on both sides. Then you wanna take another piece of twine and wrap it around the top a few times, tie that off, and then you can trim off the bottom to create your tassel. And you end up with just a really fun, cute, chunky piece of garland that is such a great accent as part of your decor. Now this eighth DIY is a little bit similar. Again, you're gonna grab some beads from Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter, get the square ones, get the round ones, get whichever one makes your heart happy. Now they also carry these in a pack and honestly Dollar Tree beads are a great price. You're gonna take some of your favorite paint, water it way, way down, and then toss those beads into like a jar or a some sort of container with a lid, shake it up. You can then dump them out. I like to put them in a separate container before I place them onto a cloth, but you do wanna use like a paper towel or a cloth to wipe off any of that excess paint, let them dry, and then you can string them up onto some twine, tie a tassel on the end, then you have a beautiful piece of garland and whatever color that you have chosen to use as a decor piece, oh, what a great accent it makes. One thing about Dollar Tree is you can always find fantastic frames. So for this next DIY, pick up a few of their frames or you might have something at home already. And then I have a free printable here for you that I just think is so much fun. You just need to trim it down so it'll fit inside of your frame. I did create these to work with an eight by 10. I think that they are just so fresh and beautiful. Make sure you check the description box for that link. For this next DIY, you want to grab some of these wood stems that Dollar Tree carries. While you're at it, also grab their bamboo hoops. Now, I decided to use the smaller hoop, but of course you can do the same thing with the larger hoop. All you're gonna do is fill that hoop up with those wood stems until it is completely full. You're going to need two to three bags depending on what size of hoop you choose to use. Now it's time to get some resin. Now you can get resin from like the craft store, on Amazon, it doesn't matter. Just pick out a resin, they're all basically the same thing. They come in two different bottles. You do a one-to-one -one ratio and then you have to mix it up for a few minutes. Just follow the directions that come on your box. Before you pour, you do wanna make sure that you have something underneath your wood pieces. So a wax paper, the silicone mat, because you wanna be able to pull this away once that resin has set up. While you're pouring, just make sure that you are moving all the way around those wood pieces. Not so concerned about making sure it's covering the top, but more that it's getting in between all of those cracks. You may even notice that some of the resin starts seeping out underneath that bamboo ring. Not a big deal. We're going to fix that in just a minute. Just make sure that you give this time to set up. I normally give it overnight and then come back to it the next day. Then you're ready to pull it away from whatever backing you chose, whether it was wax paper or silicone mat. It doesn't really matter. Just go ahead and pull it around. And you can see I have plenty of resin that set, seeped through that bamboo ring. All you need to do from here is to take your shears or your scissors. You want some pretty good heavy duty ones and just trim as close as you can to that bamboo ring. And look how absolutely beautiful this is. I think it makes a great candle holder, but of course you could display other things on it as well. This next DIY is really gonna save you money because you're gonna pick up some of these Dollar Tree candles, pop them into a pot with some water, and melt that wax because we are gonna cre create our own candle instead of spending 10 plus dollars on one that you can purchase. To go along with this, you will want an essential oil. Now I'm using Centronella because I wanted this to go outside for the mosquitoes, but you could do like peppermint, lavender, whatever smells you love. What about five or six drops per candle, and then you're gonna take your melted wax and pour it into a jar, any jar of your choice. Of course, this jar came from Dollar Tree, and I love that it has the twine around it, so it just makes it look that much more high-end. It did take me all three candles to fill up this jar, and I did reuse one of the wicks that came from the jar. I just hot glue that to the bottom to keep it in place while I'm pouring in that wax. 
once this sets up though, you have yourself a beautiful candle, whether you are keeping this for yourself or if you choose to gift it to someone else. this next DIY, you want to grab some napkins. It doesn't matter what the print is. It's whatever speaks to you. You also want to grab a candle or a couple candles. These are the ones that Dollar Tree has in stock and they are perfect for this project. The first thing you want to do is to separate your napkin. It's like a two ply or not like a two ply. It is a two ply. So you can just run your fingers over the edges and that will help to separate those two parts. And then you can just peel them apart from one another because this is four of the same picture on one napkin. I went ahead and cut around the image. It doesn't have to be a perfect cut. You just want to trim off so you don't have such strong, sharp edges of the napkin. You will also need some wax paper to do this. So once you have your wax paper, here's how the layering goes. You have your candle, your napkin, and then you wrap your wax paper around that. Hold on to the wax paper, and now you're going to need your heat gun, and you are going to take that around that napkin and you are going to melt the wax ever so carefully so that that napkin melts into the wax. You can then trim away any excess napkin that you have. Now if you have any bits that are over the top or bottom, make sure that you use that heat gun to secure those down as well. Then you have yourself some beautiful decorative candles to display. Just imagine all the different napkins out there and all the different designs. next DIY is so easy. You're simply going to grab one of these mirrors from Dollar Tree, give it a good coat of paint, whatever color you want. I tend to stick to neutrals, but it would be fun in a pop of color as well. And you have yourself a really pretty candle holder. For this next DIY, you want to pick up some of these wooden snakes from Dollar Tree. This is definitely the best price in town. Once you have these, you can go ahead and snip off that head and that tail. Then you need to measure. So we are using these with some of the hurricane vases that Dollar Tree has. Wrap it around. And if you need to cut off any other segments, this would be the time to do it. And then glue those two ends together, creating a ring. You are then going to stack several rings on top of each other, gluing them down. So for one set of these, I only did three. The other set, I have five. And look how easy it is to slide those hurricane vases right in. And doesn't this make a stunning high-end candle holder? And I'm not going to lie. This is the only way I want snakes in my house is when they are wood and they are creating a beautiful decor. Now, you didn't think I was going to waste those tails, did you? Absolutely not. So take all those tails that you just trimmed off earlier and one of these little cube dicey pieces from Dollar Tree and glue those tails all the way around it. Once they're glued on there, then you can paint it. As you can see, this looks like a jack. So I wanted to give it a vintage brassy looking jack. So I started with that metallic paint and then I watered down some black paint and used a sponge to just kind of dab it all the way around and kind of wipe it off super thin. So it just really was adding a coating to give it that really vintage brass look. Then you have yourself such a fun, versatile decor piece that you can use in so many different decor styles. Now for this next DIY, you want to pick up these wood rounds that's in the plus section at Dollar Tree. Now, if you don't have a plus section, Target also carries them and they're the same price. You also want to go ahead and grab a 10 inch embroidery hoop. You're just going to be using the inside. So go ahead and separate those. Then you're going to glue that hoop. Now, this would be a good point to go ahead and paint these whatever color you want. So here I have some white paint. It's very watered down because I just want to do a whitewash over the entire thing. All you do is brush that watered down paint on and then wipe off the excess. Glue the two pieces together and you have yourself a beautiful little tray. Now to take this up a notch, pick up this bell cloche from Dollar Tree, trim that little ledge that's on the very bottom off and then pop that black part that's on the top. Now to cover up the holes that are on this, I went ahead in with some half wood beads you could also use a full wood bead if you want to as well. I glued those on, but to make sure that they stayed in place, I did take a popsicle stick, trim it down, and then pop that on the underneath to secure that. And that makes just a really cute handle on top of this cloche. So of course you could leave it just like it was as a tray, but when you go to pop the cloche lid on, it just takes it to the next level. I absolutely love this for only a few dollars.
I also made a really chunky cloche by using another one of these wood rounds. I also picked up a smaller one at Hobby Lobby. Now, to go in the center of it, I did go to a hardware store to look to see if I could find a good foot, but look at these prices. That was a no-go for me, so I headed to a thrift store because I think feet on furniture is gorgeous and can be used so many different ways. Luckily, they had a basket full of different feet, so I snatched up a few of these. This really fat one right here, perfect for this job. The foot still had its screw in it, so I just simply removed that, and then I glued all three of these pieces together. After that, it was ready to be painted. Because I wanted a layered look, I started off with a very neutral brown for the base. After that, I went in with this really light blue. This is Crystal by Waverly, and I did not give it full coverage. I just wanted to kind of just brush it on randomly, and this is how it looked once that blue was on there. Once the blue dried, I did go in with white and kind of did the same thing where I just kind of brushed it on randomly, making sure I still had some of that brown and blue poking through. So you do want to go ahead and seal this to protect it. So I'm using feed and wax. I'm just squirt some on there, use a brush to kind of buff it in or wipe it in, wipe off the excess. And then about 24 hours later, you can come back and then really buff it to get a nice, smooth, shiny look. This makes a great tray all by itself, but you can also pick up a glass cloche lid at like Hobby Lobby. And isn't this absolutely stunning, a great way to display things. Here's another way that you can use some furniture feet. I grabbed these at the thrift store at the same time that I grabbed that big one and I just painted them and I think they look absolutely stunning as candle holders. For this next DIY, you are going to want to pick up a pack of these bamboo rings from Dollar Tree. To start off with, you want to drill a hole in the center of each one of the rings. I'm using a 1 8 bit because it fits perfectly right there in the center. Then you simply want to take some twine. It's going to be folded in half and you are going to thread it through both of those holes and then loop it into itself so that you can attach those two rings together. Tie a knot a couple inches away from there and then you're going to get some greenery to embellish it. So here I have some lamb's ear and some eucalyptus. You're just going to attach the pieces at the bottom, trimming where you need to. And to secure them, I simply use some more twine. But you could also go in with like a zip tie, hot glue, whatever you want to do. Once you have all your greenery on the bottom, you could also add in some florals. Simply cover up that center with a bow. And you have yourself such a simple and easy wreath. I absolutely love this indoors on like a smaller door. It just adds like the perfect subtle pop of color. For this next project, you're going to want to pick up a couple of tags from Dollar Tree. Now, they do have these out in the summertime, but they have tags all the time. It doesn't matter. Just grab two tags. If you want to use the front of it, you can, but it actually is a lot easier sometimes just to flip it over and use the back. Of course, this is the part where you paint them whatever color you want. I love this. This is Moss by Waverly. It's one of my absolute favorite greens. For added interest, I personally wanted to do some grain stack lines, so I taped it off and then used some white paint in order to do those stripes. To finish off the stripes, I did do a thicker stripe down the center of those two more narrow stripes. To soften up those white lines a little bit, just take a fine grit sandpaper and sand over the entire sign and you'll just get a much softer look. If you want to put a bow, one of the easiest way to do it is to take some strips of ribbon, your favorite ribbon here. I have two different ones, folding them in half and then I leave two straight. Take either a zip tie or some twine, wrap it around the center of those. I personally love to create dovetails on the ends of my ribbon. So I fold them in half and from the edge to the center, I just cut upward and then you get that pretty little V. And for this bow, I took another piece of ribbon and I glued it right in the center, covering up that twine to create like another loop and give it just a little bit of a fuller bow look. And from there, you can just hot glue your bow right onto one of the signs. Now, if you want your two tags to stay exactly the way you have them placed, go ahead and use a little bit more hot glue and attach those two tags. I personally also like to glue my tails in place. That way, everything stays exactly put the way I want it to be. To finish this off, I went ahead and added a vinyl decal. I did make this with my Cricut, but if you don't have a Cricut or another cutting machine, you can also use stickers to do the same thing. Or if you have great handwriting, which I do not, you could also freehand this with like a paint marker of some kind. Then you have yourself just a really pretty door hanger that you can leave up all year long. I absolutely love this. It really is easy to do. And I like that it's different than your traditional wreath. For this next DIY, you want to grab one of Dollar Tree's coconut bras, cut all those strings and separate the two halves. 
Next, you're going to need something cottony. So I was sent this in a mystery box challenge, so I have a diaper, but cotton paws would work so much easier. You're going to use Mod Podge to stick the cotton onto the coconut, but definitely pour it into another container because it gets kind of gross and you do not want to get it out of the Mod Podge. Mod Podge bottle itself. So dip that cotton in, soak it up, and then press it right onto the edges of the coconut bra. You're just going to go all the way around, and once you have it on there, then you can go in with another coat of Mod Podge just to really make sure it's nice and coated and to get kind of a smoother look. For this next part, you're going to want to grab a couple of bottles from Dollar Tree. I love the texture on the one on the left. And I wanted to add some texture to the one on the right. So I simply took some more Mod Podge and some twine. I dumped it in there, soaked it up, and then it took that twine and wrapped it around the bottle. And the Mod Podge will keep it secure on there. It's kind of a messy job, but it really gives a nice textured look. Once all the Mod Podge dried, to give myself just an easier time, I went in with a white spray paint to just give it a nice base coat. Once it's dry, then you can glue a jar and a coconut together, and now you have two mushrooms. Of course, they're not the best mushroom color, and so I definitely wanted to paint these. For a thicker paint, I have baking soda and some paint that you can mix together, and that will add even more texture to these. So I did that with one of them where I brushed it all over the bottle or the bottom half of the mushroom and the top as well. And then for the other one, I wanted more of a terracotta color. So I took a couple of Waverly's paints, mixed those together and painted that directly on. I did not add any baking soda to this mixture. I do have another free printable for you. I will link it down below. You would need to trim it for that eight by 10. Now, of course, these mushrooms look just fine on their own, but I think the printable just really brings it all together and gives you such a sweet little woodland feel. I absolutely love these. This next project, you will need two of these easels from Dollar Tree. Now, first, what you wanna do is take one of those and you're gonna change the screw. You're just gonna flip it and put it in on the other side. After that, you're gonna take the back legs, you're gonna flip them up, and you need to glue those together. You also need to glue these little pallets together in sets of two and then place them together so they create like a little bench. After that, go ahead and grab two pieces of string and you're gonna weave that through those pallets and you're gonna take it through, whether you wanna call it the top or bottom, it doesn't really matter. You're just gonna take it over and under and over and under as you can see here you're going to do that on both sides with two different pieces of that string yes we're making a swing if you haven't guessed that already now the easiest way to get this on is just to go ahead and tie those strings or ropes right onto that swing now to make sure it's nice and level is to use a level but once you have that on there go ahead and snip off that extra string that you don't need and now you have yourself a cute adorable little swing and you can place whatever you want on the swing i think it makes a really pretty and cute and whimsical plant stand but honestly there are so many possibilities next DIY you want to pick up this really cute little netting bag that Dollar Tree carries now if you don't have this you could also use fabric or Dollar Tree does carry this fishnet and you can even dye this to get a more similar look you want to pick up one of these stools that's in the plus section at Dollar Tree now I want my legs to match my bag so I'm using some light pink paint and some red paint and then slowly adding in more red until I get a color that I think looks really good with the bag now, painting this is absolutely optional. You don't have to, but I think it really helps bring everything together. At this point, you can go ahead and put whatever it is that you are covering your bench with on top, wrap it around, and then take a stapler and staple it all the way around to secure it. This is the one from Surebonder. It's called their Trigger Fire. It's my absolute favorite one. Any extra netting fabric that you may have, go ahead and trim that away so you have a nice clean look so many different things that you could do with this stool but I personally love it as a plant stand I think that the pink of the stand that I'm using plus the green of the plants just looks so good together next DIY definitely makes a statement you want to pick up one of Dollar Tree's planters or at least something that looks like it so here I have a bottom of an Easter egg I got this in the plus section now to paint this we are going to mix some paint and some baking soda and create a really thick texture 
I don't have exact measurements for you. You just keep adding in more baking soda until you get the consistency that you want. I personally want this to be, I think like a blizzard where when you turn it upside down, it doesn't dump out. Then you're just gonna take that mixture, mixture and spread it all over the planter, the bowl, whatever it is that you are using. Don't worry about having like bald spots where some of the color pops through. We're gonna handle that in just a moment. So once that's dried, now you can go in with your second color. This is coming off pretty white here. I'm actually using a really light gray. And I'm not concerned at all that some of that darker gray is poking through. I actually want it to poke through because we just want that layering effect. You chose a really bright color like I have. You may want to go ahead and paint the inside so that it doesn't distract from the overall look. And for the very final layer, I'm mixing up some more of that original gray paint and some baking soda. But this time the baking soda is a little bit more frosty consistency. You can then just stemple that color on. Again, don't worry about that lighter gray poking through. You want this to have that layered look. You can even take some of this on the inside so that it has a little bit of texture as well and it's not so flat. Now, if you're like me and you feel like this got a little too dark, you can always go in and just dry brush some of that lighter color on and really makes everything pop. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. It has so much texture. I think it is gorgeous. That last planter was a little too much. Here's another planter option for you. Paint your base whatever color you want it to be. So I wanted a dark color. I went with black. And then you're going to use a texture spray like I am here. This is from Rustoleum. It's called Stone. This is the exact one that I am using. And it really just adds a very beautiful texture. This next DIY, you want to pick up one of the hula hoops from Dollar Tree. Now you can remove that paper that's on the outside of it if you want to, or if you're like me, just toss it into your spray tent and spray paint the entire thing and just skip that step altogether. You then wanna grab an assortment of flowers. I wanted to go with a total pink look. I got all of these at Dollar Tree. You also will need some floral foam. You're gonna start off by taking all of your florals and then trimming them, leaving a little bit of stem on each one, and then you're gonna get your floral foam slice it and then add a notch right in the center. I'm actually just using a metal ruler to do this and I found that it worked so easily. Now it's time to secure that floral foam right onto the hula hoop. I find that hot glue works best for this. Also, you wanna secure all onto one side, just stacking them on top of each other. Now it's time to go ahead and add your floral picks and you just wanna place those all over, making sure that you really cover up those foam blocks so that you get a beautiful view no matter which way you look at this wreath. For this sign, you wanna grab some of these little domino pieces from Dollar Tree, they're just a really thin wood. Place two of them side by side and then take a third one to go across them to secure them together. You're gonna to want a total of five sets of these. Then using some of the Dollar Tree's poster stickers, go ahead and spell out the word hello. After that, you're going to take a piece of twine and you are going to tie it across the hula hoop. And then to secure these onto the twine, go ahead and trim up some popsicle sticks. And then you can take the letter and the popsicle sticks and place that twine in between. And that will hold this on nice and secure. Then you will have yourself an absolutely beautiful wreath that you can display. DIY, you want to grab one of Dollar Tree's pie pans, go ahead and give it a good coat of whatever spray paint color you want, or if you want to leave it silver, by all means, you do you. You want to grab a 12 inch mirror. Now, I grabbed this one at Target, but you can also get them at Michael's. They're actually the same price. I found the best way to secure this is to use some of Sherbonder's construction adhesive. You can tell I use a different adhesive and it did not work, but Sherbonder's construction adhesive, oh my goodness, this stuff can hold and it holds so well. Then you have yourself just an absolute beautiful mirror to display anywhere in your home, office, wherever you want. Now, if you wanna see all my favorite tools that I use in this video and other videos, make sure you check out this video next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.